A Washington sheriff is so pissed off with the Washington State Department of Transportation that he is willing to buy each individual homeless person, and there's about 600 of them at this enormous camp called Camp Hope. He's going to buy them a, a ticket to go wherever they want, get back with their loved ones. And he's also saying, hey, if that doesn't work out for him, you know, maybe the state leaders can invite, you know, one or two of them each into their own homes. So that's literally what we've got is we've got a sheriff. We've got a sheriff. There's a new sheriff in town and he's making some demands. Let's get into it. Let's see what's going on. All righty. Washington Sheriff buys homeless bus tickets and invites them to Washington leaders' homes. Hey, be a good person. Be a sanctuary household. Take in a few people. I mean, that's that's what we're doing. Don't mind their meth use. Don't mind, you know, maybe a little fentanyl. Don't mind some of their aberrant behavior. Bring them into your homes. It's going to be all okay. Do you remember when Los Angeles County Sheriff Alex Villanueva, I believe his, his name was, he went to Venice Beach and he said, hey, I'm coming in here to clean this crap up. And you remember, like that, all of a sudden, he shamed city leaders into cleaning up Venice Beach. That was, that was like a miracle to watch happen. Okay, so you're the sheriff and you're saying you can get her done? Oh, you've overstepped your boundaries. Now we actually have to get it done. It felt like that was literally what's going on. Is the same thing going to happen here? I don't know. This is Spokane. And, um, you know, it could happen. Kind of doubt it, though. Spokane County Sheriff Ozzie Nezovich has written a harsh letter to Washington state leaders about the homeless camp problem in his city. The letter sent September 22nd is in response to the homeless camp in Spokane, in which Nezebik describes as inhumane conditions created by Washington State Department of Transportation's inaction. They've done nothing. You know what? You know what their response back was? Well, we're reimagining and we're rethinking what this situation look like, so looks like. And we know that we've got issues going on here and we're working internally with all of our various representatives of various departments and chiefs of whatever, government-wise, government talk. We're doing stuff, shifting things around. We're working on it, but we want to make sure that we get this right. Government talk, government talk. Yeah, just a bunch of crap, right? They're not doing anything. They're just like, oh, okay, oh. camp hope. <laughs> And not much hope there, right? And that's what the sheriff is saying. There is no hope in this encampment. 600 people, just like right off I-90. It's the major freeway, east and west. His letter, which you can read in full below, we're going to read a little bit of it, describes his plans for solving the problem that are nothing short of controversial. Uh-oh. That means he's thrown something out that could actually be enacted and might actually have some action behind it. Oh. That, you know, homelessness and action, those are two things that government doesn't do well. Here is what he is going to do. Let's see what he is going to do. The letter addressed to the Washington State Department of Transportation by the sheriff states, consider this letter notice to Washington State Department of Transportation that I plan to clear this camp by mid-October. Boom! That's exactly what Sheriff Villanueva did down in, in LA, right? He, he set like a date and he said, I'm coming in, clearing it out. And then everybody reacted. Whoa. Hey, whoa. Slow your horses. Nezovic plans to do that by buying bus tickets for each homeless person to anywhere they want to go. He says in the letter that his plan is to provide bus tickets to the location of each resident's choice, allowing them to reunite with family and to assist them in recovery. What if they don't want to go, Sheriff? I see a lot of these folks are, they're just living their lives, not their best lives, but they're living their lives in this, what is it, a quarter section? I don't know. Pretty big area, right? Pretty big area. They've got quadrant off. And somewhere else I read, well, we're going to put a fence around it. 
It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, all right. Are you going to fence them in? Or are you trying to keep the public out because they want to get into this homeless? Enc- I don't know. I will also engage the faith community to help with drug, alcohol, and mental health treatment. So he's going to the churches, going to the people of faith. That's an interesting approach. That will get residents worked up. That will get you know people just going, well, he says he's going to do this and he's going to do this. That sounds like that might work to me. I mean, we might at least give it a shot, right? Now, engaging the faith community to help with drug, alcohol, and mental health treatment, unless you are in those, in, in some capacity of drug, alcohol, or mental health treatment services, you know, maybe getting the, the church involved is a step towards that, but it, he doesn't really outline how that goes. He just kind of throws out faith community, drugs, alcohol, and mental health treatment. And he's he's nailed it right on the head with the drug, alcohol, and mental health treatment, right? I would actually could cut that down to just drugs and mental health treatment because as many times as I've, you know, looked at the homeless encampments or been there or you know, read whatever, watched video. So often it's not the booze. It's not the booze, right? So a guy, we've got a homeless shelter thing, interim facility that used to be a Silver Cloud um, hotel. It is open for business. It is housing those that have been houseless. And I saw at my uh, bus stop right here by my office the other day, it was pretty funny. It reminded me of a podcast I did a while ago where a guy stole XYZ number of cases of beer. I can't remember what it was. But I literally saw with a dolly at my going going to work right here, um, just a couple of blocks up the road. Let's see, that's 140. So it would be exactly six blocks up the road. He had a big dolly and it was just loaded with cases of Modelo. Yep. Yep. And he's getting on a bus to go where with all his beer? You guarantee you he's going to Seattle. He's going to the Blade. He's going to sell those goods coming from Bellevue. Ripped it off from Bellevue. He's going there. Because what other homeless individual has a big dolly? It's probably, you know, six foot tall, something like that. Loaded up with cases of beer going to the bus stop. Yeah. So there was that. If there's a reasonable explanation for that, I'd love to hear it. But there isn't one, right? The sheriff also invites state leaders to invite the people in the homeless camps into their own homes. That's not going to work out well, is it? That's my final suggestion. If Washington State Department of Transportation wants to demonstrate their compassion, I suggest that those responsible consider sponsoring a member of this camp with a room in their own homes, consistent with Washington State Department of Transportation's suggestion to the east side neighborhoods of the city of Spokane. Take that, Washington State Department of Transportation. The sheriff thinks that if this camp were located in your neighborhood or the Secretary of Commerce's backyard, this issue would have been resolved long ago. Probably would have, wouldn't it? But it's kind of out there by the freeway. It's kind of in this buffer area. Doesn't look like there's a lot going on. Beyond that, yeah, there's a bunch of residential homes and developments and whatnot, right? So those people in those communities, I'm sure, have just been through a nightmare, however long Camp Hope has been allowed to stay there. So because this area is abutting I-90, everybody's looking for the Department of Transportation to do something. But And I think it's also on city-owned property. Maybe we'll get to it here. But because he's the sheriff of the county that this camp is located in, he does have some rights to go in there and clear it out. So that's why people get worked up. They're like, oh, you can't do that. That's progress. And, you know, we pride ourselves in just, well, letting it go and, you know, levering our fellow human being and just see how far we can push this mess. I have spent countless hours speaking with residents who have been greatly impacted by the state's inaction and assure you these citizens have lost all hope for resolution. It's this homeless encampment that is just growing and growing and growing and it's gotten really super big and people want, they want, they want some kind of resolution towards this. You just can't, you can't have this on the side of the I-90. You just can't, right? 
Washington State Department of Transportation, Washington State Patrol, and the Department of Commerce released a statement in response to Sheriff's letter. They state, our agencies know only too well from the past that clearing the camp will only make things worse for the entire city. Therefore, we do nothing because then, you know, you can't be blamed for making things worse for the entire city. Hundreds of people disperse across country, states, uh, city, state, and private lots. Well, the only reason hundreds of people will do that is because you allowed hundreds of people to stack up in the first place on the side of the freeway. Yeah, you did that. So now you got to disperse them. You got to deal with it. Sheriff's offering to get them a, a bus ticket. I don't know. That seems pretty reasonable to me. And the issues related to unauthorized camps, you can say, you know, hundreds of people will disperse across the country and, and you're going to have the issues related to unauthorized camps from security to garbage will also be dispelled, also be spread out. Well, yeah, but you got them all in one section right now. So what's the difference? All in one section, those need to be dispersed. If you're going to give them a, a bus ticket, like the sheriff is saying, well, then they're going somewhere and then it's going to have bring in the church to, uh, you know, deal with the other stuff, the substance abuse and the behavioral issues of which there are many coming out of a homeless encampment the size of 600 residents. This action will not make anyone's life better or safer. Actually, if you did that, it would make the people in the surrounding communities lives better and safer. And that's the whole goal, right? That is the whole goal. That's all the sheriff is trying to come up with. This other political nonsense is just that. Nonsense. They are speaking to hear themselves speak. That's what you have. I mean, th there is probably some small truth to what they're saying, but they're using that to basically blanket the entire scenario, right? Oh, we can't do that because then, you know, dispersal. The fight over who is to blame for the homeless camp continues with no solution from either side in sight. No, no, no. The sheriff just provided one. Mid-October, this is what we're doing. That's what he said. That's how sheriffs operate. I don't know. I like it. There's a new sheriff in town. Is this going to send the people in the camp to other cities in the state like Tri-Cities? So it's my understanding. So this is in Spokane. We are reading this article off of 97 Rock. I believe that's the Columbia Basin's rock station um, out of Pasco, Pasco, Washington, part of the Tri-Cities. Yep. So southeastern section of the United of not of the United States, of, of the state of Washington. So let's just take a little looky look at what the um at what the Sheriff County Sheriff Ozzy D. Nezovic. Let's see what Ozzy has to say. The lawlessness and public health implications caused by the concurrent conditions of the camp at Third and Freya, and in parentheses, whose name more common represents anything but hope because it's called Camp Hope. Yeah, right. Continues to impact one of Spokane's most marginalized and disadvantaged communities. They are homeless. They have no resources. The you know, they're living on the side of a freeway. You talk about living in a van down by the river. These guys are living in a van on the side of the freeway in Spokane. Man, it gets hot in Spokane. You know, you go over east of the mountains and you don't have that whole rain cloudy thing. It's just in the summer, blazing hot over there in the hundreds sometimes. And it can, so clearly Washington State Department of Transportation, Commerce, nor our elected state officials are concerned with the plight of this extremely disadvantaged community. If this camp were located in your neighborhood, he's basically just saying, hey, take these people in. I'm clearing it out. You asked me about my plans to ensure that each resident of the camp has access to safe and secure housing options. My plan is to provide bus tickets to the location of each resident's choice, allowing them to reunite with family and to assist them in recovery. I also engage the faith community. Doing all that, a local pastor provides a tested and proven program to address these issues. Additionally, in light of the current housing options offered by the city of Spokane, I've developed uh, and developed with a, a commerce department. There is presently $25 million allocated to provide for safe and secure housing options. Frankly, it would be far safer for commerce to simply pay a year's worth of rent for the estimated 600 people at the camp than to allow the situation to continue. 
the guy provides some pretty concrete measures of how he's going to take care of this. Unfortunately, those are not those are not measures that are held in high regard with people who deal with homelessness on an everyday. They just want to, you know, come up with a. Has anybody come up with an approach other than, hey, yeah, you know what, you can't pitch your tent there, and uh, if you don't like that, we're going to throw you in jail. Has anybody come up with a better solution than the one I just described, and that is oftentimes enacted in cities that, you know, actually have compassion for their fellow human beings living on the side of the freeway. In Spokane, let's just take a look and see what's the weather like in Spokane right now. Spokane weather. Ah, it's 86. Yep, that's 80. No, no, it's 90 degrees today. It's going to be 90 today. Imagine being in a tent that's probably 104, 105 degrees because, you know, traps that heat and, you know, not a lot of AC. There's not that cooling window effect, especially when you're on the side of the freeway, Interstate 90, hard pass, hard pass. So letting people live in this environment is just brutal. And that's why the, the sheriff says one of the most disadvantaged communities in, in, their, in their entire neighborhood, it is. And yet the powers that be, leadership, Department of Transportation, they're just kind of letting it fester, right? Because they're so overwhelmed, they just, you know, do something? Oh, no. We're going to wait until some sheriff just runs a program right up our backside and threatens to actually do it. And then, you know, we'll get around to rapidly reimagining and rethinking how we can clear this encampment out. It feels like that's what's going to happen. Do you think that'll happen? Let me know in the comments, what do you think will actually happen? What the sheriff says or what typical government says, which is, hey, we're working on it, but we got to take some more time. We got to come up with a plan that's been reimagined and, you know, rethought 10 different ways from Sunday. So will this sheriff, will this sheriff get his way and clear out this encampment? One way or another, it sounds like that will probably happen. He's put a real spotlight on what's going on, right? I mean, he's really just bring that spotlight on in, just like the sheriff did down in in uh, California, in in Venice Beach. And everybody, everybody down in Venice Beach was like, "Oh, that is so inhumane of you. That's terrible." Just like the folks that are getting the illegal immigrants sent to them in their sanctuary communities are claiming this is human abuse. This is terrible. You're using these people as political pawns. Nah, you're getting them the help that they need. The sheriff getting people the help that they need. All right, get a bus ride. Now, the fact of the matter is, so few people of these are, these these folks are going to accept the bus ride to wherever, to the places where they can get help. It's not like they're sitting around asking for that to happen, are they? Let's be reasonable. So that's an ixnay on that A, right? That's a no-go. So the alternative is, sheriff offers that, has the church come in, pastors come in, talk about their options. All right. They don't want that either, right? Because if they did, they'd be calling out for that. Hey, we need more treatment. We need more mental health care help. They're not asking for that. They just want to live and do their own thing and then camp hope forever in perpetuity, and in perpetuity, sorry. So what's really going to happen? Is this a precursor for the sheriff saying, all right, you guys don't want to do that. I'm going to arrest you, and put you in jail. Is that what the sheriff's going to do? Because that is typically what sheriffs do. That's what police do. That's their thing. That's what they're paid for. It's called public safety. And if you got to take people out of an environment that is not safe for them, and I'm going to say that living on the side of a freeway in a tent in Spokane in summer, that is not safe. So where is the compassion? Where does the compassion lie? Just letting them live there and do their thing till the camp reaches a 1,000 or 1,500 people? How long did it take to get to 600 people? That's a crazy big number, right? And, you know, how many how, – were there 600 people down in Venice Beach that were lining that boardwalk? Doesn't feel like – doesn't feel like there were that many. But in the 
the streets and the alleyways kind of leading up to the beach area in Venice Beach, maybe there was that many. Maybe there's that money, but 600 people. How did you allow that to happen? I mean, I know things exploded during the pandemic, but that's a healthy sized, that's a healthy sized encampment. I think Echo Park in LA was maybe that size all when they were all said and done, but that's a massive area. This to me, from what I could see from uh, drone footage or maybe it was helicopter footage from a local news crew. Um, it, do, it geographically, it doesn't look that huge. It's not like you've got just this massive area. There, you know, there's 600 of them. They're pretty dense in there. So, however big that area is. But what will happen? Something's going to happen because if the sheriff threatens to come in and, and arrest people and putting them in jail, I mean, what capacity jail does he have there? See where we go with all these options. You're like, okay, can't really do that. Yeah, can't really do that. Yet the sheriff has to, he's got to make some noise because obviously whomever is trying to rattle the cage and get this homeless encampment, Camp Joy cleaned up, they just haven't had success yet, right? And there's a certain point in time where these situations, somebody's button gets pressed and then they jump into action. Oh, geez, yeah. Don't know what we've been thinking on this one. We got to get this cleaned up. And yeah, this joker over here, he's going to, you know, go through an inhumane process of sweeping people out. Whereas we're going to sweep people out and, you know, we're going to talk about what a great job we did and all the things that we did to make people feel good about themselves during a sweep. It's a brutal situation, isn't it? On the one hand, you don't want to allow people to live this way, but they want to live this way. But, you know, legally, you can't be living on the side of the freeway. You can't live just willy-nilly wherever. So where's that happy medium? Do you throw people in jail? Is that what you do? I mean, that's what Bellevue, City of Bellevue does here. And that's why we have no homeless population. Because the folks that come here from Seattle, they get bussed over here from Seattle. They get off the bus and they try and monkey around with a tent here in Bellevue. It's a hard no-go. And the police get them in contact with the services they need. And if those folks don't want to accept those services... They end up in jail. Simple as that. You can't pitch a tent wherever you want. It's not how this works. But in so many of these, you know, West Coast cities that have the more liberal leaning as far as their government structure goes, it's where you're at. It's what's going on. This is uh, this isn't you know this isn't hard to kind of look at and go. Oh, okay, how'd we get here? Well, you had a lot of policy that just kind of let people live wherever they f they want, and they did. And now the communities where these encampments are located are screaming mad, angry about the scenario. So as this scenario keeps going, and it will, this will have a couple of this will have a couple of good bumps right before mid October. You saying? What do you say about October tenth or so? We got it probably about ten days before, maybe a couple of weeks before something really good happens. I'd love to get over there and see it. It's Spokane's a long drive. Um, there's some beautiful parts of Spokane. Not Camp Hope. All right. So when, a, when an update does come on Camp Hope, I will let you know. Thanks so much for being here. We'll catch up soon. Talk then. Bye for now.